Glutathione is a powerful antioxidant and helps protect your cells from cellular damage. Low levels of glutathione have been linked to various chronic diseases like Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, or autoimmune diseases. So supplementing with glutathione is essential for preventing chronic disease or treating chronic disease. In this video, I'm going to discuss the best forms of glutathione and what forms we should use to treat certain conditions. I'm Dr. Jacob, naturopathic medical doctor and integrated physician. On this channel, I share with you how you can heal your body down to the root causes without any harmful drugs or surgery. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. Okay, let's jump in. Glutathione is the master antioxidant. Welcome back to the Dr. Jake podcast. I'm Dr. Jake Schmutz. I'm an integrative doctor and naturopathic physician in Salt Lake City. And in this podcast, I share with you how to heal your body down to the root causes and get your energy back without harmful drugs or surgeries. I'm here today with my co-host, Teresa, to talk about glutathione for chronic disease. So let's talk about what is glutathione and how does it even help prevent or treat chronic diseases? So glutathione is three amino acids. It is cysteine, glycine, and glutamate. These are three amino acids that bind together to form glutathione. I guess we could go back to why it says it's hard to absorb glutathione orally because our body's really good at breaking down amino acids and it just breaks it down into those individual things. Those things might be broken down and made actually in glutathione. It could be used all kinds of other areas throughout your body. But glutathione is an extremely strong antioxidant. It's the strongest antioxidants that we have. It is stronger than blueberries, acai, or whatever other antioxidant that you want to talk about. It's what our body naturally makes to decrease oxidative stress, which is this oxidative trauma that's happening to our body daily. We are always bombarded with oxidative stress and we need to decrease it to be able to keep our bodies from degenerating and also keep us from keep on getting older and older and older and lead to all these chronic diseases. So keeping your antioxidant level is just important for that reason. So keeping glutathione levels up is important to decrease this oxidative stress. But what else does it do? It also helps detoxify all our organs, our liver and our kidneys more specifically, it helps those organs work more efficiently and helps detox whenever we get ex exposed to gunk. It also helps all our cells throughout your entire body eliminate cellular toxins. So we get all these toxins, pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, etc., bind to the phospholipid membrane on the outside of our cells and make our, all, our cells not work well. When I say cells, that means our brain, that means our heart, and it means our adrenal glands, it means our thyroid gland, whatever all these different areas of our body aren't going to work as well when they have those, this toxic gunk. Glutathione helps eliminate that toxic gunk inside our cells and get, help eliminate that toxic gunk around our cell membranes. It also is a great anti-inflammatory. So if you look at chronic disease, it's always related to chronic inflammation. The, down to the root cause, it has that piece. Inflammation and oxidative stress. That's what leads to diabetes. It leads to heart disease. It leads to Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune diseases, any neurological problem. Everything is related to this chronic inflammatory response, oxidative trauma. So obviously you're going to see that it's going to be really great for chronic disease if we give glutathione because those are the root causes of what's going on. And glutathione helps treat all these different. So it's one of my favorite substances that we have because it does so much. There are very few of my patients that don't get that are dealing with a chronic degenerative disease don't get glutathione because it's doing all these things that we just talked about. So does it imply that if you have low glutathione, that means you're going to get a disease? Not always necessarily, meaning that if you got a disease means you had low glutathione, but it definitely is a piece. So let's just think about this. Most of us get chronic diseases when we're 50 or older. That's when people start getting sick most of the time with a cardiovascular disease or diabetes or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, whatever. That's when that things happen. Our body decreases glutathione as we age. So I think it is a piece to the puzzle of why we get sick is low glutathione, but it's not the only thing related to that. So I won't say just because you have low glutathione means you're going to get sick because there are people that have low glutathione and didn't necessarily get sick because if you're 80 years old and you never take any glutathione and you haven't gotten sick, doesn't mean that you're going to get sick if you're low in glutathione, but it, it does increase your risk when your glutathione is low. Let's talk about like what type of people actually need to supplement glutathione. So 
if you have a degenerative disease, so that's like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, autoimmune disease, etc. I think you need to be definitely taking something to stimulate glutathione or taking glutathione itself. So if you actively have a chronic condition and you want to improve it, you should probably be getting glutathione. Definitely 100%. And let's say if you want to prevent getting any type of illness in the future, you should be taking some type of glutathione stimulant too, because it's going to be helping improve these reactions. So let's say you have chronic inflammation in the brain that's like related to Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's or any other disease there. This is going to help decrease that inflammation in the brain. It's going to help decrease further trauma that's happening in the brain from the oxidative stress and the inflammation. And it's also going to help stimulate mitochondrial function. I think we forgot to talk about that, but it actually increases the glutathione function inside the cell. So it's able to heal, generate and repair. So I really love glutathione because it's doing all these type of things. And those are the perfect type of people that need to be taking it. Now, if you don't have a condition like this, you don't necessarily need to be doing book amounts of glutathione. If you're young and don't have any chronic disease, I don't think you need to absolutely be taking glutathione. But if you start at least getting into your 40s and 50s and you have risk factors for certain diseases, I think you need to be thinking about doing something to increase your glutathione production. So how do we actually get glutathione in the natural form? You, I said that we actually make glutathione. So yeah, we do. Our body makes it from those three amino acids that I just talked about. Cysteine, glycine and glutamate. We get that from amino acids that we're eating. We get that from meats we get that from plants. And then our body, when it needs it, makes those from that. But if you have some chronic disease, you're depleting your body very quickly of glutathione and no way you're going to get enough glutathione just from food. You're going to have to do something specifically to stimulate glutathione or get glutathione by itself. How do we stimulate our own glutathione production? What are some substances that do that? So we have one that I love is turmeric or curcumin is very potent on stimulating glutathione production. So you could take turmeric as a curry or you take it supplementally. Usually you're going to want to at least be getting 1000 milligrams a day to be able to get decent glutathione production from that. We also have milk thistle, which is really good at stimulating glutathione production too. These both do it mostly in the liver, but they do do it in other cells throughout the body also. And then we talked about cysteine. So we have a substance called and acetylcysteine. So you could take that supplementally and get high amounts of cysteine. When you have a over amount of cysteine, it will eventually get turned into glutathione in your body. So it is a good way to get a good amount of glutathione being produced throughout your body through that. And then there's something that you, a lot of you might not necessarily love doing, but you could do a coffee enema. And that's something that can help us stimulate glutathione from your liver and detoxification from your liver also. What's a more potent way to get glutathione? We talked about stimulation, but what about what's the best way to get pure glutathione? So, and I'm a huge fan of getting pure glutathione. Stimulation is good, but if you're really sick and you're dealing with chronic disease, I want to get it in the full form. And like we said, glutathione is hard to absorb. It's made of three amino acids. Our body's really great at breaking down those amino acids. So we need to get it in a certain way so it actually gets absorbed when you do it orally. So the best way to do it is in the liposomal form. That's in like what's called a liposphere. And it's actually going to get absorbed like your body absorbs fat. So we absorb fat, a lot of our fat through our gut, and it goes through the lacteals. And that is in our stomach. And it helps by Pass some of that breakdown that's happening and, and bypass a lot of that breakdown and get it right into our lacteals, which are our lymphatics, and it bypasses the liver, et cetera, and gets in our bloodstream through that. So that's my favorite way orally to take glutathione. Now, if you do have a chronic autoimmune disease, degenerative disease, or many of the other diseases I talked about, my favorite way really is IV glutathione, that's intravenous glutathione, getting right into the bloodstream, because we're able to get a lot higher amounts in there, about a thousand times more potent when we do it. IV compared to just oral. That's where I really see awesome results come from is when we're doing IV glutathione. Now it's not necessarily you have to do something like that if you're just trying to prevent certain diseases, but if you're actively treating a chronic illness, IV glutathione is an awesome way to do that. Are there any side effects to glutathione IV? Really, there aren't a lot, except if you have sensitivity to sulfur, for example, glutathione does have a lot of sulfur. And I have seen patients get a little sick when we do IV glutathione because they do have that sensitivity. Usually what I like to do to decrease that effect, usually they have a genetic snip of their sulfite oxidase enzyme. 
and that needs a lot of manganese and they're usually deficient in manganese. That's a common deficiency. So we supplement with like 500 micrograms of manganese for a month or so, and then they're able to do glutathione really well. The only other thing is you might have allergic reaction to the glutathione itself. That's very rare. I actually haven't ever had that in my entire office and I've treated thousands of patients actually be allergic to glutathione, but there is that possibility to it. If you're very toxic, let's say you have a lot of heavy metals or you have a lot of herbicides or pesticides or you're a welder and you have all kinds of chemicals or whatever. If you're very chemical, chemical laden person, mm -hmm. uh, glutathione can make you feel sick for a little bit because it's pulling out all that gunk and helping you eliminate it. And if you don't have good binders in your gut to help bind all that up, you just recirculate it. And then that roams throughout your body and can make you feel sick. So you just need to do it appropriately there. Sometimes we do it slow to, and ramp up in those people to see how they do. And we, every time we do IV glutathione, we start slow. We start out with only 400 milligrams and then we work up to 2000 milligrams. And just to describe, like I'm saying thousands of times, we're able to get a much higher amount. Like orally, we're usually only taking like 100, 200 milligrams each dose. And that's only orally, which isn't gonna absorb anything like IV. So it's just a lot more potent in that regard. But you gotta take it easy. We always work up, see how the patient does. Some people take it like no problem whatsoever. And that's really most people. Some people we need to really stay on a low dose or do that manganese treatment that we're talking about. So are there any symptoms that point me towards, oh, glutathione isn't good for you. No specific symptoms that someone might be experiencing, but you could maybe see what type of foods you don't do well with that do have high amounts of sulfur. So let's say you don't feel very good. You get a lot of gas or bloating, even though that's not necessarily good. That could be all kinds of gut microbes being a problem with garlic or onions are high in sulfur. But let's say you get a headache with golf or onions or garlic, or you get joint pains or you uh, lightheaded or whatever. When you eat these foods high in sulfur, and the most common ones that people are eating are the garlic and onions. So if that happens, and when someone tells me that, that's going to tell me, okay, you have a sulfur issue. We'd likely need to promote your sulfide oxidase enzyme. We're going to give you some manganese before we do the treatment. So yeah, if you want to set up an appointment with me or some of my other awesome doctors at Integrative Medica, visit our website, integrativemedica.com. Find our phone number there. Give my receptionist a call. And you can set up an appointment virtually or you can see us in person. You could also, if you don't want to talk to someone, you can just set up the appointment on our website. If you want to learn more about glutathione, click my video to the right. I'm Dr. Jake, and I'll see you there.